What happens with anxiety, people who experience anxiety, and I'm going to use myself as an example in this scenario, is we think that if something makes us anxious, it is bad for us and it's the wrong thing to do and experience. So if we're anxious going to a party, anxious meeting new people, right? Anxious going on the phone, talking to strangers. We're not good at small talk. We feel awkward in these situations. We think that, okay, since I'm anxious there, I'm going to do things that actually don't make me anxious. So I'm going to isolate myself. I'm actually happier as an individual when I'm alone. Seemingly so. So anxiety actually convinces us of these things. It actually takes over the mind and we convince ourselves, you know what? Maybe I'm not a social person. Maybe I am a full introvert. I'm an omnivert. I love my alone time. I love it. I need it to recharge. But then I crave human connection and I need to see people, meet people, talk to people. I need that connection. But when I was dealing with severe anxiety, I convinced myself the other way. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm just growing up. And part of growing up maybe is, yeah, you know what? I like my alone time. I like being isolated. Nobody understands the complexity of my mind. I like being alone. I'm creative. I can do that on my own. I don't need people. Since people make me anxious, it's the wrong thing to experience. Push it out of my life. And this movement of positive vibes only. No. Bullshit. Bullshit. The, the classic motivational quote, I don't know this is verbatim, but everything we need for personal growth is at the other side of fear. Meaning, just because something's uncomfortable, just because something makes us sweat, just because something has the potential to make us feel terrible, doesn't mean that it's bad for us, doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to do. And it's a really weird mindset we have to shift with this, right? Because we automatically think, yeah, if something doesn't feel right, it's wrong. So just because exercising and lifting heavy weights feels terrible, that must mean it's terrible for us and it's the wrong thing to do. Of course not. So anxiety has the potential, and it did for me, to convince us that we're not likable. That we're not amazing human beings. And that one always makes me emotional. And that one always pisses me off a little bit. Because I've had the opportunity to meet amazing people just like you. I'm not sure who's watching, but let's just say you were in the same boat and you've convinced yourself that you're not a likable person because you have anxiety, right? That you can't small talk, that you feel awkward around people, but you, my friend, you have unique abilities. You have original thought. How cool is that? You think like nobody else thinks. You see the world like nobody else sees the world. Your strands of DNA will never be replicated again. Like, you owe it to the world to share your perspectives and your voice. And it hurts me to see people have anxiety take that over. And they forget who they are. They forget what they can offer to the world. So anxiety might be the reason why you have trouble making friends. And don't get me wrong, stand-up comedy, like Seinfeld did a great job of actually explaining why, like it's so hard as people in their 20s, late 20s and 30s and then onward to meet new people, to actually get a group of friends. It takes a lot of effort. It really does, right? Because a lot of us have these friends from elementary school that we just kind of tag along. And even if you don't like these people, hey, you know them though. The history you have is all you need to stay friends. It's hard to meet new people. I get it. But make sure and really think about, okay, is anxiety convincing me that I'm not a social person? If I was free from anxiety, would I actually be able to meet new people and make new friends, right? And have that social connection. Because what's really important to know, and I think I've done a video on this, but I, I talk about this in all my presentations when I speak, is... Having a social group, having real connection with another human being decreases anxiety. It's scientifically proven that it decreases our cortisol levels, increases oxytocin, increases dopamine, reduces anxiety because we know that we're safe. We know that we're connected. We know we have someone who, who gives us attention and meaning and purpose and we can share. That is something 
worth striving for for a lifetime to meet that person, to meet new people, to have that social group. So you have to deal with anxiety and you have to meet these people while maybe dealing with a bit of that. But once you do, the antidote is actually in the thing that we fear the most. Isn't that incredible? The antidote to anxiety with the social connection, it's in the thing that we fear. Don't let anxiety tell you that you're not a useful person, that you're not a valuable person, that you're not a beautiful human being that can offer something to the world. You're way more than that. <laughs> you're way more than that. If you like this video, if you found it useful, I'd love to make more like this for you. Now, in the very near future, I'm actually gonna be talking about my own personal experience with anxiety, how I actually overcame anxiety, which is gonna be pretty awesome. So that's in the very near future, within the month, I'm actually coming out with a course for overcoming anxiety. And it's gonna be pretty awesome. I'm just taking a few students. So um, if that sounds cool, make sure your notifications are on so you get all of the updates when I release new videos about anxiety. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check out the Depression to Expression podcast, all of my social channels. The link is in the description. You're more than anxiety. You're a lovely human being. Your DNA will never be replicated again. Stay strong, keep being you. Don't forget to express yourself. Love you all.